This is a disgrace to our university and a disgrace to all the constituencies who are out here today fighting for what's right. It is a disgrace that the Board of Trustees would refuse to listen to every constituency who came out here today. I'm disappointed. Like, I love this university. All of my dreams have come true here, and I'm sure many of yours have as well. And today, my home doesn't feel like home. This thing is nothing but the living, and it stinks. I believe that we should give this man a chance to be the leader of our university. I do think the man deserves a vote, and that's all we're asking for. Good Friday evening and thanks for joining us for Friends at Five. I'm Darcy Strickland. And I'm Alicia Niavis. We begin tonight at the University of South Carolina. Robert Caslin has been chosen as the next president of USC, the president-elect. He now becomes the 29th president in the school's history after a controversial selection process that included a vote of no confidence from faculty and staff. Trustees out a vote this afternoon with 11 for Caslin, 8 against, and 1 trustee voting only present. Caslin will begin his job according to his contract on September 16th. His salary will be $650,000 a year. This will make him one of the highest paid public employees in the state. We begin our team coverage with News 19's Jenna Kurzina. Yes, Jenna attended today's board meeting. She joins us now live with more. Jenna. Good evening, ladies. Lots of emotions here and a lot of back and forth, as you heard from both students, faculty, alumni. I mean, it's been a, 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 a battle between a little bit of everybody, but I actually spoke to General Robert Caslin on the phone earlier today, and he's actually not here in Columbia. He told me he was in Salt Lake City, but he's excited. He's ready to work with students, work with faculty and engage with them, and he's ready for the possible obstacles that could come from this vote from today but overall he did get voted and here's a listen in from that meeting earlier all right motion uh, to elect general Dasman uh, is approved 11 board members voted for robert castlin eight against and one decided not to enter a vote after a heated discussion on why a vote should take place today supporters said it was important to get castlin while he was still available Opponents pointed to calls from the governor to hire the former general. The governor of South Carolina over the holidays is calling me, soliciting my vote for a person he's never met. Now, this thing stinks with politics. You leave your politics at the door or leave it at the car. Before the vote on whether to hire Caslin, fired up board member Charles Williams urged his fellow colleagues to postpone the vote. You know, the damage is done. It's just a question how much more damage is there going to be. Meanwhile, Molly Spearman says after speaking with Caslin, she believes he can overcome the obstacles in front of him. I believe that we should give this man a chance to be the leader of our university. Now, it's going to be very difficult, and he knows that. The board ultimately decided not to postpone the vote. Board member C. Edward Floyd says they can all agree they love the university. We are where we are, and we all love this university. When this is over, please let's all get back together. Now, Williams was definitely one of the most outspoken in today's meeting before the vote. But again, I did speak to General Caslin earlier after he was decided to be the next president here at the University of South Carolina. And he told me that there is going to be a press conference on Monday. He did not have the details or the time of that press conference, but hopefully we'll get word of that here later or confirmation from the university. I'm going to send things back to you, ladies. Jenna Krasina, thank you so much. The new president-elect of USC released a statement today. As Jenna just said, she did speak with Robert Caslin, and this is what he had to say on Twitter. He says in part, I am honored to be chosen to lead this great institution. I fully recognize the challenges the board addressed to get to this point, and I am grateful for their support and confidence. I'll work tirelessly to listen to all of our students, faculty, staff, board members, and all of our constituents to understand their concerns and issues, and I will actively seek their advice. Governor McMaster released a statement following the vote to name Castlin the school president. He said, quote, the selection of General Robert Castlin as the next president of the University of South Carolina is a positive and transformative step forward for the future of the university and the state. 
I am confident that every student, alumnus, faculty member, and citizen of this state will benefit from his superior leadership, vision, and direction, which he has demonstrated throughout his remarkable career. Trustee Charles Williams initially raised concerns about the process to choose Caslin as president. He filed a legal challenge after an initial meeting was called without giving trustees enough notice as required by law. Well, during today's meeting, Williams spoke at length, saying that the selection process has become political and he places the blame on Governor McMaster. The governor, who just supposed to be a board member, asked another political appointee for these job phases to go talk to a member of this board to try and get them to sway their vote. Now, if y'all don't think that I, when the Sachs gets a hold of that, that we not going to be in trouble on accreditation? Now, do I think they going to just take out total accreditation? I hope not, but I can promise you we're going to get at least put on probation, and it is going to destroy this university. Now, who are we here for? Who, who is the board for? Who do they represent? If you don't represent the students, if you don't represent faculty, if you don't represent the alumni, and you don't represent your donors, who the hell do you represent? This thing is nothing but political, and it stinks. And for this board to, to push this thing through, you know, it's going to destroy this university. It is absolutely going to destroy this university. And the government needs to pay a price for the turmoil he's created. Because there's nothing going wrong with this board. It has started a new search. It has done what we voted on in, in April. And he has completed just, I, I can't even imagine why, but I know why. It's a political favor. So we're going to destroy the university over the governor calling, being called in to do a political favor. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I don't, you know, you know, I, I, I can't live with myself, and I cannot live with making political decisions for this university. A group of University of South Carolina students, faculty, and USC community members gathered outside the trustees meeting and were outraged as the final decision was made. This is a disgrace to our university and a disgrace to the, all the constituencies who are out here today fighting for what's right. It is a disgrace that the Board of Trustees would refuse to listen to every constituency who came out here today. And it hurts because I, I love this university, I love the campus. I, it means a lot to me and to just kind of have it all trampled because of a decision that I wasn't given any choice in hurts a lot. Of the people who showed up today, only one man was very outspoken of his support for Robert Caslin and Governor McMaster. They have a duty to get the best person and that's what they did. So the talking about the process is, is another phony issue. So they got the best person they could have gotten and apparently he was favored all along by the majority of the board and, and that came out in the meetings. So when they talk about the process, it's just their way of saying, hey, we don't want him. Many people continue to voice their opinions online regarding the vote to elect Robert Caslin as the University of South Carolina president-elect. Outside of the Alumni Center in the Vista, I'm Emily Carell, News 19, WLTX. Before the meeting, a hot mic led to a controversial statement unintentionally heard by the public. A group watching at the Alumni Center recorded the words on their phone. Take a listen. A lot of those people that demonstrated are from out of town. I've heard it some of that Camilla Harris crowd there. They got this thing all tied into the Democratic uh, primary. And uh, it, there's a lot of organizing and things going on. Well, it's been confirmed by people who were in that meeting that those words have come from Board of Trustees member A.C. Bubba Fennell, who called into the board member, uh, board meeting, I should say, voting in favor of Caslin as president. 
Board members are not required to attend those meetings in person in order to place a vote. And a spokesperson for Kamala Harris tells News 19 the campaign was not involved in the protests surrounding the president at USC, but they say Harris supports students making their voices heard. The search for a new president started after Dr. Harris Pastides announced his retirement last fall. Kaslin was one of four finalists announced to take over the position. Each of those candidates visited the school during the spring. Kaslin took part in a forum with students discussing his work at West Point. He also took questions on a number of topics ranging from athletics to programs that support victims of domestic violence and sexual assault. We as an institution have to kind of provide the advocacy to support all survivors as they go through what they did, what they have gone through and how to recover out of that and, and how to deal with each particular survivor in their own unique particular way. I'm here today because of my love of you and the next generation of men and women that are going to be leaders in their communities in the corporate world and here because I want to give back. Well, Kazlin also made a comment that binge drinking was a big factor in campus sexual assaults. This proved controversial and led some students to protest his nomination. Two years ago, Castlin was a candidate for an even higher profile position. According to media reports, Castlin was one of four men considered by President Trump to become national security advisor in 2017. This position was vacant at the time after the president fired Lieutenant General Michael Flynn. Former UN Ambassador John Bolton ultimately was chosen for that position. And Kaslin was at the White House last year. He was with the U.S. Military Academy football team that was honored in the Rose Garden. President interrupted, the president interrupted his prepared speech to thank Kaslin for his work at the Academy. Bob Cashin, where's Bob? Where's Bob? How do you like it, Bob? Bob Kaslin, you know, you remember our meeting, right? That was a good meeting, right? But I'm glad you did what you did, and you have done a fantastic job. Thank you, Bob. Well, Kaslin would leave West Point shortly after that White House visit, ending five years as the head of that academy. One of the university's biggest donors called on members of the Board of Trustees to cancel today's meeting last night. Lake City billionaire Darla Moore sent an email to the Board of Trustees chairman asking him to stop today's vote. In the email obtained by News 19 last night, Moore says she's making a final appeal to the board to reject what she's calling the rank political influence in selecting the next president. She also said the process should be started over to find a qualified candidate. In that same email, Moore also reminded the board chairman she is the school's biggest donor. Over the years, she's given USC more than $75 million, and the School of Business is named in her honor. This week, our deep dive team laid out the entire timeline of the USC presidential search. Sydney Holdridge has more. On October 3rd, USC President Harris Pastides announced his retirement after 10 years on the job. On April 17th, USC's Board of Trustees announced the names of the four finalists for the university's 29th presidential position. On April 24th, General Robert Kaslin visits the university for an open forum for students and faculty. On April 26th, about 75 students protested Kaslin as a finalist following his comments on sexual assault. This same day, the Board of Trustees met with the intentions of announcing their presidential selection that evening. Instead, they closed by announcing they were continuing their search after a unanimous vote. In the meantime, they named USC Upstate Chancellor Brendan Kelly as the interim president. Last Tuesday, July 9th, trustees were notified of a board meeting for Friday, July 12th, to give a potential vote on the school's next president. On July 11th, a judge issued a temporary restraining order saying the meeting violated state laws by not giving the board members enough notice. On the same day, more than 150 USC professors, as part of the Faculty Senate, gave a unanimous vote of no confidence in Kaslin. On Monday, July 15th, the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools reached out to the university with some concerns. Sachs is requesting they write a report outlining their process in searching for the next president by August 10th, pointing to concerns about political interference in the process. On July 16th, McMaster gave his first response by pushing back on the criticism and continued his support for Kaslin. USC says they will file a formal response like Sachs requested. A group of faculty, students, and alumni held a press conference to discuss what they call a lack of transparency by the Board of Trustees.